45. Roll call, please. Mrs. Scioli. Here. Mrs. Foley. Here. Mr. Leidick. Here. Mr. Roberts. Here. I'm here. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pursuant to Ohio Revised Code Section 12122G1, I hereby move that the board adjourn to executive session. For the purpose of considering the investigation of charges of complaints against a public employee or official of the school district and considering the employment of a public employee of the or official of the school district. Do I have a motion? Or, I'm, I'm sorry, is there a second? Second. Roll call, please. Mrs. Foley? Yes. Mr. Leidick? Yes. Mr. Roberts? Yes. Mrs. Trevsky? Yes. Mrs. Seoli? Yes. Could you add a uh, discussion of uh, contracts, bargaining and contracts as well? President. Okay. Sorry. Um, I move that the board adjourn to uh, pursuant to Ohio Revised Code Section 12122G4. I move that the board adjourn to exec executive session to prepare for contract ne negotiations or bargaining sessions with employees concerning compensation or other terms and conditions of their employment. Is there a second? Please. Roll call, please. Mrs. Foley? Yes. Mr. Leidick? Yes. Mrs. Tresker? Yes. Mr. Roberts? Yes. And Mrs. Seoli? Yes. Are we going or? Yeah, let's do it to my bed. Other than a few illnesses and a bus break on the way home, it was a great trip, right, Mr. Nisley? Yes, it was. Yes. Yeah, so. Photo coming shortly. Good, good. Great here. Uh, congratulations to our homecoming queen, Jordan Rowan, and King Alexander Dane. I would like to thank all those involved in organizing this year's homecoming festivities. It was an uh, awesome weekend. Uh, thanks to all who organized the Really Run, held on Saturday, October 5th, and celebrated our distinguished alumni and athletic hall of fame inductees. Uh, later on that day, uh, Steve Brocklick, uh, Pat Korb, Andrew Sarvis, Karen Sundy, Tom Trenny, Michael Hanhauser, Anthony Kukwa, Billy Miller, Evan Nichols, Michael Ryan, and Alex Shank. Uh, teams inducted were the 2015 Girls 400 Freestyle Swim Relay, the 2013 Wrestling Team, and the 2014 Wrestling Team. Uh, the induction ceremony that evening was a wonderful and out with outstanding speeches from representatives of each inductee. Uh, great job to our EL uh, teachers organizing a, a celebration uh, this past week in honor of Hispanic Heritage Month. Uh, anytime I get fed great food, it, it's a good day, and uh, uh, I needed a nap after that event. So thank you very much. That was awesome. Uh, uh, on Thursday, we will be taking a representative. Uh, we will talk to representatives from the governor's office uh, to begin that journey. Here we go. Uh, budget bill uh, preparation, and so the work begins to try to ensure that we keep that language um, in the budget bill, talking about utility tax reimbursement revenue and all the things that uh, we rely so heavily on. So uh, we will be beginning that discussion, those discussions on Thursday. Uh, Friday, uh, from five to six, there will be an open house uh, to come view our new welding hub at the Prairie High School. So uh, um, the initial uh, word is that it's, it's been a great experience for, for our kids. And so if you wanna get a look at that, uh, that area, uh, that, that would be an off a uh, great opportunity before uh, Brandon football. And uh, with that, congratulations uh, to all of our fall sports athletes, uh, some of which are bringing their seasons to a close. Uh, uh, we're having great seasons as always. That concludes my administrative update. Thank you, Dr. Thompson. And we did skip accidentally committee reports, so let's go back to committee reports. We had safety committee. Okay. Um, they went over placement of the AEDs and stop the bleed, additional AEDs and stuff. Well, the AEDs weren't placed, right, Jesse, in the way to move one outside yeah, of the gym. Yeah, you're moving stuff yeah, outside of, I know we had one in the gym area, maybe in the theater, somewhere over there, they have the one, then we added three stop the bleed kits, I believe. So that there was one in every hallway. Yes, yeah, so. more accessible. Um, and then we were talking about looking at additional safety measures um, in the classrooms in the case of a an emergency. Okay. I think we should discuss publicly because no, 
Safety, right, right. <laughs> no, I think that's about it. I mean, they had successful safety week. Their lockdown drills, everything went well for, for the staff and the students. And um, I think there's, uh, the only thing they were doing was, I think the freshmen might have an opportunity for some CPR training. Um, a little hands-on CPR for the freshman class uh, was going to be happening sometime in October. It might have already happened since the meeting, but that was something excited uh, for our students as well. Okay, and we informed them that we did go ahead and purchase the bi-directional. Yes. Okay. Okay, anyone else? Okay, public participation, we have one person. Mr. Miller. Okay, it's three minutes of public participation. Please start with your name, your address, and um, it's not a back and forth, just so you know. So if we don't respond to it, it's not because it's just how we practice. So we're, sure. we're free to talk to us afterwards, like email, call, whatever you like to do, but that's typically how it works. Okay. Okay? Uh, my name is Anthony Miller. Uh, my address is 4510 White Angel Drive, Barry. Um, I've just heard speculations and allegations regarding the wrestling program came up through Perry and the wrestling program, so I just like clarification. Um, so first I would like to, were these allegations an investigation conducted against the wrestling coaches initiated by a board member? Has the investigation been completed? If so, how much did uh, that cost as being a taxpayer? Uh, is the investigation still under review or I guess where it is along the process? Um, and how do I go about getting details about this investigation? Okay, um, so typically we don't go back and forth, but public records requests are submitted through our board website. There's a form there that you can fill out and submit any public records request that you want to. If you want to call any board member and ask us any questions, you're free to do that, but we don't typically go back and forth at the board meetings. Okay. So the public records request, if you have any trouble finding it, it's right on the board website. Um, there's a form, of, you just click on right there, you can call Mrs. Capo or CFO. She's our public records officer. Okay. Okay, thank you. Is there anything else? Okay, um, consent agenda. Item A, review of minutes. The board is asked to approve the minutes from the regular meeting of September 17, 2024. The board hereby waives public, the public reading of these minutes and shall post them accordingly. Item B, approval of extension of signing bonus stipend. The board is asked to extend item seven of the memorandum of agreement between OC and the Board of Education dated November 8, 2023 for the 2024-25 school year, retroactive to July 1st, 2024 by the local superintendent and the chief financial officer. Item C, approval of salary increments. The licensed staff members listed below have filed evidence of advanced academic training to qualify for contract adjustments. Pursuant to the collective bargaining unit agreement, the board is asked to approve the following salary adjustments for the 24-25 school year, August, 20, August 1st, 2024, as recommended by the local superintendent, assistant superintendent, and chief financial officer. Item D, approval of a novice practitioner scholar. Pursuant to the collective bargaining agreement, the board is asked to authorize the chief financial officer to compensate the employee listed who are entitled to the negotiated contractual stipend for completing 2324 district initiatives as recommended by the local superintendent. Item E, approval of consent agenda. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Is there a motion? I was just reading right along. <laughs> so Second. Roll call. Or any discussion? It's been a very long day. Roll call, please. Mr. Roberts? Yes. Mrs. Kesker? Yes. Mrs. Scioli? Yes. Mrs. Foley? Yes. Mr. Light? Yes. Dr. Thompson, Superintendent's Report? Thank you. Uh, under personnel A, approval of a leave of absence, in accordance with the terms and conditions of the collective bargaining agreement, Ohio Revised Code, and their applicable leave balance, the board is asked to approve a paid maternity caregiver leave for the individual listed below for the balance of six days accumulated, permissible, and available as recommended by the local superintendent and director of student services. Under B, personnel approval appointment, the board is asked to approve the individuals noted for the position indicated pending successful completion of required employment paperwork, background check, and certification as recommended by the local superintendent. 
Under C, personnel approval appointment independent study, the board is asked to approve the employment of the individual listed for the first semester independent study supplemental position and ready to pay indicated for the 2024 25 school year as recommended by the local superintendent and the principal. And D, personnel approval appointment athletic supplementals, the board is asked to approve the employment of the individual listed for the 24 25 athletic supplemental position and rate of pay indicated pending successful completion of required. Uh, employment paperwork, certification training, and background check as recommended by the local superintendent and athletic director. Under E, personnel approval appointment, uh, athletic volunteers, <coughs> the board is asked to approve the individuals listed as volunteers for the 24-25 sport noted pending successful completion of background check and certification as recommended by the local superintendent and athletic director. Under F, personnel approval appointment substitutes, the board is asked to approve the individuals noted for the 24-25 daily substitute position listed Pending successful completion of required employment paperwork, certification, and background check as recommended by the local superintendent. Under G, uh, personnel approval appointment volunteers, the board is asked to approve the individual noted as a 24-25 volunteer pending background check and recommended as recommended by the local superintendent and building principal. This concludes my superintendent's report. Is there a motion? So Second. Any discussion? Can we remove D from the, the, the group? Okay, would whoever who made the motion? I did. Would you amend your motion to exclude item D? Let's amend motion to exclude item D. Is there a second? Do we have to say what we're approving? Um, yes. So the motion would be to approve ABC, items E, F, G, ABC, E, F, G. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Yes, yes. Roll call, please. Mrs. Trevsky? Yes. Mrs. Scioli? Yes. Mrs. Foley? Yes. Mr. Leidig? Yes. Mr. Roberts? Yes. Is there a motion to approve item D? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mrs. Trevsky? Yes. Mrs. Scioli? Abstain. Mrs. Foley? Yes. Mr. Leidig? Yes. Mr. Roberts? Yes. Mrs. Capo, Chief Financial Officer's Report. Thank you. May approval of financial reports. The board is asked to approve the financial report from September 2024 as recommended by the Chief Financial Officer. B, approval of contracts and agreements, ESCWR Gateway. The board is asked to approve the addendum to the Aligned District Services Agreement with the Educational Service Center of the Western Reserve for participation in the Gateway Program for students as indicated on their IEP as recommended by the Director of Student Services and the Chief Financial Officer. C, approval of contracts and agreements, Crossroad Health. The board is asked to approve an agreement with Crossroads, Crossroads Health for short-term student assistance program and ongoing, <coughs> ongoing <coughs> student services for the 2024-2025 school year as recommended by the local superintendent and director of student services. D, acceptance of grant funds. The board is asked to accept the following grants and to approve the appropriations for such grants as recommended by the chief financial officer. And this concludes my chief financial officer report. Is there a motion? So any discussion? I have a question. Letter C, Crossroads. Um, just we already have one agreement, with them, don't we? Jim? This is this is the one. Is it okay? Is it changing? No. <clears throat> so if this is the agreement we have with them, we already have an agreement. Mm -hmm. We just we didn't earlier in the year. The the agreement. Not the program. The individual. Campus. Right. We approved that earlier in the year. This is our this is one ten quarter. So it's not on top of all the things we Okay. The only other one that we have was in the last one, the day trader, for example. That was that was for um sale program, right? We would have had one for to sale. the Western Reserve. We would have I'm referring to the crossroads agreement here. Yeah. For the individual that comes on campus and provide campus services. Um, 
All right, so is this one right here? It says services prayer middle school and high school to be provided to identified students at the rate of 65 per hour for the 24 25 school year with a standing resource fee of 5500 per month for 10 months. The maximum annual contract will be 55000 So there's so it's showing an hourly rate on here, and then it shows a monthly, and then it shows the maximum for the year. Caps. I'm just a little confused on that's the, how it's always construction on the this contract oh. so if there's an hourly and there's a monthly but then there's a, I understand the maximum for you for the year I understand that so we can't exceed that number of hours apparently that gets us to that point right um, so is it possible that we would be under the 5500 per month typically we come in under it okay. depends on how much is versus what's in the past so we, we typically our overages are typically our typical cost is much closer to each where the compensation is usually between eight and six or but we generally overshoot. I think last year we come came in at about forty two. Okay. But they made changes this year to get them first they're sharing that funding source with another mental health provider. So there are just some things that we have to do differently. Um it would build differently so we set monthly caps so there are monthly caps when we don't exceed that amount um, from the duration all right this but this but they've been providing service to us since august correct all right congrats on the ohio equipment grant nice seeing it in writing <laughs> accepting nine hundred thousand dollars pretty nice I agree. <laughs> that's all i had sir okay Anything else? Roll call, please. Mrs. Scioli? Yes. Mrs. Foley? Yes. Mr. Lydic? Yes. Mr. Robert? Yes. Mrs. Tusker? Yes. Your name should not be in order. Unfinished business. Can we take, we had just received some communication just before the meeting. It didn't really have time to read through it. And before we have this discussion, I think it'd be advantageous for all of us to have some time to read through it. So I think if anyone is not opposed a 10 minute break in order to give us the chance to review the documents, that, yeah, she's got these. would that be helpful? Well, I guess my question is, are we, as a result of this discussion, is, is the hope that we kind of give a thumbs up? Um, I want to go back to the study that uh, the company came and did. Going so this is they with regard to the about. Champion Farms property. I'm sorry, and the sale of the Champion Farms the property. So right. that I'm, I'm if, right if anyone hasn't followed along who's yeah. here, um, we had a meeting on Friday, October 4th, and we were grateful for everyone who came out and got the opportunity. We had the opportunity to answer some questions or ask some questions and have some questions answered about the potential development of the data center going in on the former Champion Farms property and all the details that go into that the impact on the school, the impact on the community, um, where the school falls with relation to this. And it's, you know, exciting to see the development coming and the potential growth, but being good stewards of our students, we want to make sure that we're doing what we can to benefit our students. So in the original agreement, none of the, the purchase of the property of Champion Farms could not go through unless the school had stepped in and helped out with that financially. So we purchased the property. Our only ask in that situation was that in return, we be given a cross country course and preferably on site if possible. Well, there's a deed restriction. Right, there's a deed restriction. So, so in order for the, the property, for the development of the data center that they want to put on the property, we would need to lift that deed restriction. Uh, because to. we've been asked to because they don't want to um, have because for security reasons they don't want the cross country course on the property um, so there was some discussion about that on Friday this is the only thing that the school stands to gain from us purchasing the property and we want to make sure that we're doing what's in the best interest of our students and providing for our students in the best way we can so that's why the discussion has been going back and forth and now we're working on because it can't be on that property, what is a viable alternative? We presented the the village um, with our proposal, correct? And in return, we received a proposal, which most of us have just seen today, um, with an alternative that would be at Lee Park. 
um, there's a pretty significant difference in where we were at with where the village has come back and said what they're willing to do for our students. Um, so we need to decide if that's going to be something that's acceptable or if we need to continue discussions on where we want to go from here to make, because as we said, like the best interest of our students is always our first priority. So we want to give them something that is up to our standard, up to our student standard, standards, safety, like there's a lot of different things to consider. Did I miss anything? No, just okay, so we received report. the proposal today of what um, it had been sent over to our attorney, looked at it. Yeah, so Thanks, Thursday, Thursday or Friday last week, we kind of exchanged proposals. Uh, we, Jen and Jack and I uh, met this afternoon with legal counsel. Okay. And so they said, what is your take? I said, well, that's going to work. So we said, we better get out there. So that's where we're at. So we've received the proposal. I don't think, I mean, it was probably four o'clock today that we received the proposal. So we really haven't had a chance to look it over and really digest it and see what we can even discuss in it. Um, so I think that's why I'm asking for a short break so that we have time to look at it. So if we're going to have discussion, we can have intelligent discussion with good questions and not drag it out to the next meeting before we can even begin to look at this. <coughs> so what do you think? So I don't know if we're going to vote on it tonight. It's going to yeah. kind of depend on how the discussion well, goes. Well, my, my question is, we haven't had a chance to talk about this. Sorry for just jumping right in. No, you're fine. Um, if we haven't had a chance to, to, to digest this and, and, and think about it, um, was a hope that we were going to give a thumbs up to the development company to start their um, <coughs> research, the two hundred fifty thousand dollar research. Yeah, I, I no, we're not. not the, when we asked when we went through on Friday, we specifically asked if we are a hold up in this. Is if this is holding up the process? And we were told very clearly that this is not the hold up. They still have to negotiate the purchase of the land from the jet and the township. So this is something that we, I don't think is critical timing. I don't, I, I, I don't know <laughs> that, that, you know, us say this looks good to misrepresent thumbs up. No, no, no. You know, it, it, well, no, we'd have to vote on it. Yes. And I believe the gentleman that's here from California, Mark, said that they could also go ahead with just with the village property without the other entities releasing property. Okay. That was potential, yeah. right? He said yeah. that too. So, so it's... I had to start doing some ideas to know that you can the answer because his, his thought process is he didn't want to own the land. So if you want a trail around there, he's going to deem you 30 feet around the perimeter. That's going to go all the way to 20, all the way around the whole property. Yeah. No, okay. it'll be yours to maintain. Yeah. I think tonight, though, we're looking for Andy if you agree with their proposal and want, want the... the, the legal counsel to, to tell them that we're of, happy or to say we need to have more discussion. Yes. Okay. So that's, that's all we're looking for. I, I just I just don't want a discussion of this to be a misrepresentation to say, okay, we're good with this, thus the school is good with this. And I wouldn't want the company, the development company, to start their quarter of a million dollar study because I still think there there's a major issue and I've heard from others in the community yeah, since our meeting concerned about the, the noise. Well, we, so, we also have to look at the financial impact. So from our perspective, like that's something to consider. We, we did ask those questions and get those answered. From the school board's perspective, it's what are we doing with the, the trail? And what's the potential financial impact on the school <coughs> of this going in? So we've had a chance to run some financials. And um, just from a preliminary look at it, I mean, it's, it looks like if there is any form of tax abatement with all of the calculations put in because of the way that the the millage works and the floor and all the funding, if this goes in and there is a 50% tax abatement, we stand to lose about $200,000 a year in funding. Um, and if it's a 10 year, we stand to lose more because of the adjustments and Jen can probably give a much better explanation because school funding is complicated. So the school will not gain if there's any form of tax treatment at all. So our primary interest is to make sure that our students are taken care of, our schools are taken care of, and with regard to the walking trail, that that's an agreeable solution. So there's, those are our considerations. Yeah, the, the, the original agreement, the only thing we asked for, like she said, was the, uh, the walking trail in, in the village and if the, the Jed and Township 
go ahead and just they, they stand to profit a lot on uh, taxes from it with the school we, we probably won't realize very much, if anything, in, in, in some cases, I had we run some numbers. We actually stand to lose a significant amount of money because the higher our valuations go locally, the 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 greater our local share in the sure. formula. So our state funding gets cut significantly. The state cuts our funding, and right? Since they're going to do an abatement, we're not seeing the tax dollars on that higher valuation. So we're they call it phantom revenue. We're not collecting money on that revenue, but the state assumes we are, so they cut our funding. Right, and so, and for just from the initial sale, the village stands to gain $8 million, which is great for the village. I mean, it's just, we need to make sure our students are given what they were promised, which is a cross-country path up to the standard of our world-class standards that we like to do everything, you know, consistently across the board. Do you want to take a 10-minute break to read? Do you want to look over, have some time to look over the plan, or do you feel like we need more time and we want to come back to another meeting? I, I just don't, I just don't know what's going to come up. Take the time to read it, discuss it, and what's the result of it? Yeah. Um, I, I'm not a fan of having extra meetings, we just but I don't want to, I don't want to relay something positive that we're not completely sure of yet because of all these other issues. Right. We I mean, need I'm, to. I'm, as I said, the meeting. This is the best type of solution uh, that we could have for the land long term because of the tax issues, because of the noise issues, um, and a couple other things. I just don't know what's going to come of us having this discussion tonight versus having another, having some kind of just another meeting. Yeah, I think just the way where it's at is we need to be able to give our attorney some direction as to where we want to go with it. So that's kind of what we're looking for tonight is what direction do we want to give as far as, because the, the attorney is discussing this. Right. And it, it's strictly right now just the, the cross-country trip that's the only thing we're discussing right. that's the only thing we need so on. we don't have to give guidance tonight to anybody right we just have to give guidance i, mean, I, I could, go, get, I could go back to the board 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 you need more time I mean, I can, we can right that. we give guidance all the time right uh, individually as a phone call or whatever here or there i mean when we have our conversation yeah just we're not voting on anything tonight no no we're just giving okay. our opinions and so, but like we can only discuss it when we're here. And this is only in relation to lifting the need restriction based on this. That, that's really the only thing. Right. Okay. So, yeah. so right. I did get a chance to look at this some today. And just preliminarily, so the village, so our proposal was not close to this. Our proposal was on our property. We consulted with them design architecture, correct, in order to design it, make sure that the water, like, all like flooding, any safety issues, all of that was taken care of and it was a safe course. So we had experts come in and talk with us. Um, or was our athletic department and maintenance department involved with our discussion? Jim Smith was involved. Yeah. Okay, so we had from our perspective, like, you know, some experts come in and talk about it. What I'm seeing here is that uh, I, I don't see any experts involved in it. I was told that it was a discussion between one of the council members and uh, <laughs> And a former cross country coach was anyone from our current athletic department consulted at all in the? I no I, I, TJ has said that he was not contacted. So and was our maintenance and operations director wasn't? So nobody from the school, current school administration board, staff was involved at all in the discussion and the development of the cross country path. So. Did the village have to approve? Did the village council have to approve the proposal? For this? Yeah. <clears throat> so or no? No. no? I, I, I so this know. just came from a lawyer, from it your lawyer from, and our lawyer? That came from uh, Mr. O'Leary to our attorney guys. Was it discussed at the council meeting or like did it, how did it come about? Um, no, it was just uh, after our talk, we had a couple of discussions uh, on with Jeannie and uh, another council person thought about what, what the option would be. And we already thought the Black Park, we were planning on buying the acreage off one of the uh, residents now that are planning on selling. That'd be a good addition to the span of the park and also put a trail or something. So we're, we're planning on putting a trail in anyway. So this is contingent upon you guys buying additional property? 
and the council would have to vote, correct? Because it's money, it's expenditure. It's yeah, oh, it's so you guys still have to vote on this proposal, anyways, and purchase land. Yeah. So we'd be way ahead of the game if we're making any decisions right now. Yeah. From my end, right? That's where I understand it. Well, I think we're looking for the deed was just removed and replaced in escrow. So we, that, that part of we can't remove the deed restriction until we know a plan, like a concrete plan. This is what's going to happen. Well, so I guess what, what um, Mayor just said is that if you put the money in escrow, the question would be is would you put in the money, part of the money that TDA said or the money that, that they said? Right. I mean, I'd be more inclined to go with an architecture firm that does this for a living to get the amount. I mean, that's my personal opinion. I don't know if anyone feels. I agree. I, I would like a, a professional opinion on. With a breakdown and. <laughs> drainage, like you said, the drainage, like all of those. So, well, safety is the most important thing. Right. So we want to make sure it's runnable and we don't want it to be anything flooded and we don't want it to be, you know. Cost there, there are some concerns with the Lee Lytic Park location. I think definitely being on site here would be preferable because Lee Lytic Park is a public park. And from what That's I can right. see. You don't want to look at the deed restriction. Mark will just need to deed off your little piece of property. Because... Does it because the original purchase agreement states that you're going to put the bike slash walking path in at your expense. Okay. Uh, Which we would do if yeah, we have right. the property. If and, we have the... and this the buyer has said that he would deed you that property. That yeah, the only concern that, that comes up with that then is at that time we didn't know it was a data center. And with having the conversation we had on Friday and hearing that it's a 70 decibel noise level at the property line and the amount of heat and traffic and things like that, that's a concern for our student safety. So that's something we would sure. want to revisit. You know, I, I want to make sure we're putting it somewhere safe for our kids. Because when that agreement was made, I believe that the intention for that property was a town center, not necessarily an industrial building that would have you know, we did a study on it for town center. That was one. Right. Also industrial, like industrial, like manufacturing, the office for medical offices type thing. Probably go up toward the 20th portion of it. Yeah. Um, but it was a, a gamut of stuff that that study produced. That one was a town center design. Okay. That shortly after that study came up, we had a town center design in Concord, which got the basis in the town's philosophy value because people have to come to the town center there as well. Yeah. yeah. And we want this to happen. I mean, we, we want you guys to make the money and like develop land and do those kinds of things that benefits the community. But we have to look at the safety of our students and the best interests of our students. And that's the, our first priority. And Mayor, this is the first that I've heard that it could still be done on that property. He said it'll be. Yeah. So maybe, maybe that. We never that. heard that. Yeah. No. no. So I got to talk to this guy like this. So that's yeah. Maybe that's become still an option. Yeah, as long as it's safe. Yeah. It'd be, he said it'd be easier without doing it, but he could do it. Okay. How far off are we on numbers as far okay. as the sheets? Um, 475000 dollars. Yes. I think our proposal was around with the architects and what they had designed was about 500, 550, and theirs was twenty-one thousand. For that was, that was for property. here at the school no, property. That was at the school property. Right. The twenty-one thousand was at Lila Car. Okay. I think the original twenty five thousand was yeah. Okay. I I assume it's gonna probably save sure. But you're you're also factoring in you know, you're not putting your labor in this is this is materials pretty much in there. Yeah, I, I, well, it's, it's gonna be it's so site right. preparation is twelve thousand, so that's clearing and marking paths including gradings for smooth running surfaces. I don't know where this is I don't either. I think <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I have a question. So, and maybe it's a comment. Um, but so, if the if the um, property owner, if Province Group, right, whoever's purchasing the yeah. land, is willing to allow us to put a trail there, I guess we, we didn't know that. And if we are, I know the concern that um, Nikki just brought up was about the noise that a data center makes because they're very noisy. Um, but the what like what would that look like on the map on the plot because we haven't seen anything so if there's a way we can see how they're only going to buy that portion you still have to worry about the plot that has to go to the township and the general portion they're not going to be too careful i don't know how that would what that would 
Okay. Well, you're looking for the old shanty farm to have this perimeter thing, right? No, we just wanted a. It doesn't have to be a perimeter. We just said a cross country path. There was a on green walk, 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 okay. Whatever the deed restriction was, it does it fall on all three entities' properties? Well, part of the whole shanty farm, so I assume it did. So it's a part of the whole deed. That's what I thought. Yes. Okay, so the part that you could say we can put I that mean, there it, is it, only it on the It makes more sense to do it on one side because I'm not sure how you yeah. cross around 20 there. I'm happy. No. Well, yeah. and that people couldn't watch. So the spectators couldn't go either. Right. Was, no, it doesn't cross right. twenty. It doesn't. It wouldn't cross any roads. No, the only thing it would cross then would be their ingress and egress. Right. Wherever they come in off twenty, yeah. they do. But they or or, or, yeah, or well, if, 20, if, if the judge doesn't sell, then it wouldn't be coming in off twenty. It would be coming in off Manchester and and narrows only. Maybe if we saw. Drawings. Mm -hmm. That would be helpful. Uh, that would be helpful. Uh, what it would look like at Lining Park, what it would look like on the Champion Farm, what it would look like on campus. Yeah. Is there a, did a map come with us? We didn't get I, didn't see, that. I didn't see one. I looked for one. I, I guess my question is is there a three point, is it 3.1 miles around that property as it is? Uh, which one? The Champion, the Champion Farm. Farm. It's four miles. It's four. Four point something, but that's the entire perimeter all the yes. way up to 20. So you, know, you take that back to three miles. And you're pushing you're definitely running over a road that people are trying to get in and out ingress and ingress for this so the work is not really one of those but i don't know if that's uncommon no. um they block it off or yeah they do it across parks they run across parks it, it's well, not well, true. typically the full yeah. trail they but they do the y. yeah or they do it the y i think that isn't there a car path across there yeah, but it's not a car it's not no sandwich not a car no remember it's not like a service road yeah so it's the Maybe. same type of road, like a service road. They run across the service the, road. The other thing is, is if it's built on, the, on that property, we're not going to have this thing for five, six years. Right. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's but, the other concern. We want to do it sooner than later. If you didn't have a buyer, you may not have a buyer. It wouldn't be five, six, six years anyway. either. Sure, I mean, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. You've had all this time since the original purchase agreement. Oh, mm -hmm. it was, I don't think we could sell it. No, no. When you, when the village when the village and the township bought the property from you with that deed restriction, there was my understanding is there was nothing stopping you from putting that path in. That was no. there. Well, yeah. The we weren't we didn't we weren't made whole until what three years ago. Yeah, probably. No, that's about a year and a half. Year and a half. Yeah. Was it sure? No. Yeah. I thought it was more than that. I thought it was two or more. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Because yeah, I thought it was longer than that. But I think we the the reason it wasn't is because we were all trying to see what was going to happen with the property. How was it going to be developed? How does this fit in? What does it look like when a buyer comes <clears throat> along? You know, we don't want to invest all that money, put something in, knowing well, that the property's for sale. In return, the, I, the, the intent wasn't that it's going to necessarily interfere right. with, with what right. happens. I think it was and so I don't I don't think there was an imminent that we had to have it done next year or whatever else. It was just part of the plan that we didn't want to lose. It, was, it right. was in return for us doing what we did in purchasing the property. That was what we got in return for our students was the land to create the cross country course. So I think in order, do you have more to be or you looking for something? I was just looking back at something. But you know, I, yeah, I, the sale price is eight and a half million, but we'll actually realize it's probably around seven after I think the So right now the land <laughs> is still in our name. Yeah. Yes. We need to train train we can right. can we transfer it before this is decided? You can. And you can do that later. I think uh, I think both legal councils wanted to kind of do it in one fell swoop. Oh. Yeah, what is this? The uh, title can be transferred to escrow at the land bank. They claim land bank. You got to name it. But that used to be the land bank. They're going to transfer when Mark finishes the buying of this property. It could be 18 months or two years. Then the title will transfer simultaneously <coughs> to us to them. It could be one fellow, one one to transfer at one time. I don't think it's responsible us to make a decision without any 
concrete plan. That's my opinion. Does anyone have a different opinion? No, I mean, I would personally like to just see, like, I mean, we have, I've got in front of me, firstly, the starting line, so that just like a, a visual, like a quick visual, because I don't know what property, I mean, I'm looking at a map right now, I'm trying to look at property lines, but I just want to see like what it was. I'm trying to you know, you know, picture like where everything's looping around and stuff like that. And, you know, there's details on here, but without actually like seeing it, especially if you're going to be purchasing property you know, from, you know, a resident uh, to expand that. Just kind of seeing what what it would look like, um, because I know there's a, a bunch of property there. Um, just one of those options. It's kind of visually, I like I like seeing things. Prospect <laughs> is like a moving um, in the woods, out trail on turners. They right. really like they don't like going to circle. No, it's not NASCAR. <laughs> no, that's why I was confused with this because it says the first pass, the second pass, the third pass. So is that a loop or is that there's multiple loops in there we have a couple trails that go through the woods now that are, are there we can find uh you know start and finish uh, once you get to the official 10 acre land there'll be another loop there um, footage is there for the mileage i don't know how i think it's the see it. it yeah sure so, so, out, so to do the 5k so. you're not like doing multiple paths it's no. one long it's gonna total be, it's gonna be like path. this it's gonna be a winding circuit but in order for that to happen, <laughs> you guys would have to be purchasing the adjacent property yes. from the current owner. Correct. Okay. Is that already under works or no? I've talked to the gentleman. He's not the owner. He's not the owner. He's not the owner. He's not the owner. He's the one who approached me first and asked if I wanted some property for the state. So probably he's the one who brings up. Okay. So I just reiterated that to him. Well, when we had you know, park is 25 acres now, it'd be nice to even take a little take a little more residents than they're getting in that. So, but we've suffered over it. It would be nice. Anyway, so mm -hmm. yeah, it would be really nice know. to have that. He does have an 18, 18 acre parcel there. I said I'll be moving to 10, but it makes sense. So. How about if I try to get some mock ups? That'd be great. What they would look like on the three properties. And, if and then also turn it back to the lawyer to see how they could put something. In writing, right. And, and curious to know what it would look like if we did it on Champion Farm, like originally in Yeah. <coughs> if that's doable. Okay. I know there was that time, type of facility there. That promise brought it before. Some it was sometime in mid October, correct? Yeah, you try to get that uh, study done. You want to put dollars to see. Sure. Do, when do you know roughly when that? Do you want know roughly when that day is? Like, is it is it Friday? Is I would it say next week or? Okay. So there's a little bit of time here then. Like not not a ton of time, but enough time where the attorneys can go back and forth. We can look at a mock up and get them what they need, right? By maybe a if, time. If we need to call answer. another meeting, we can certainly sure. call another meeting to move it forward. But I think without anything concrete to look at that the council, you know, has kind of agreed to, it's car it's kinda of hard to make that decision. And you know, like I said, we want you guys to Profit. I, the community benefits when businesses come in. We just want to make sure our end is, you know, we're getting what we had originally agreed upon. And the abatement discussion would happen much later then? So. Yeah. Might be important for him to hear because I did get an email from him this week. I think they're under the impression that we're going to get. That we're going to get a big chunk of money and then after i think he doesn't realize the formulation yeah, yeah. i spoke i told him to i'll call the experts because yeah, i am I not a I school formula either. expert it's complicated it's not my area just just kind of for rough numbers in, in class two properties we get about 2.2 2 to 2.3 million dollars um, and and we're at effective millage of, of 37 bills for it to impact our funding, we would have to it would have to drop to 15.8 mils um, before it impact the positive funding on it. Now that means that if it's was it 70 some million dollars in class two, that's the assessed valuation. So that's really more like 210 million 
you'd have to have a, and so if we go from 37 to 15, you'd have to have something like three to four hundred million dollars of valuation you for it to come in and create positive. That'd be a 1.5 million dollar facility. It was a billion last week. Well, our, our portion was supposed to have, originally it was supposed to be 1.5. Okay. Well, and so I mean, we would need some those numbers. And then, and that's unabated. So when you yeah. start abating it, it, it goes down. So, and I just use the numbers that, that I had. Those are the numbers he presented last week or two weeks ago. Okay. So, so I, mean, that's, I mean, that's that's why it's it's hard. And then so the bad theory. side to that is that if we go up 150 million and it has an in, we get some inside bills, we have 4.2 bills. You don't get any outside bills. You lose two and a half million dollars in state money on the other side. And that's doesn't get offset. So if this were, if we were to come to an agreement over the next week, would we have that contingent on the council approving? I don't know if it works on contingency or it has to be. I don't, I don't know how that would work. So, so transferring the land is, is just contingent upon um, the deed restriction and what you guys decide to do with any abatement discussion right. happens afterwards and, and below certain thresholds. We're the board doesn't have, have any say so. It's it's up to the village. Right, right. I meant more of the more. If we said we were agreeable to one of the mock-ups. So, oh. would that be contingent on the village approving it? If it's a financial matter where the village is giving well, us probably because the two entities have to agree on it. right because they haven't. Yes. I'm just making the point they haven't approved no an amount yeah. yet. So if we approved it, it would be contingent on yeah. Their, well, we wouldn't the, remove the what we're, what we're discussing. Moving from the Park or keep it where Park. Well, the thing with the moving to Lelite Park, though, is it's contingent upon the purchase of another property that isn't in progress. So it's, it's a lot of what ifs, and it's our kids. So putting what ifs, you know, I'm just, well, I'd like something a little bit more concrete. There's a third option of well, having it here. So. Right. What they would look like creatively mm -hmm. under partnerships. Join us. And we didn't mm -hmm. spend how much on the track? Uh, 843000 Yeah. So, I mean, we're, we're talking about fairness and sports mm -hmm. um, and what we're willing to do is spend. Um, I think, we can, I think it, it, it would definitely be worth talking over with the cross country coaches to see what they That's would, the thing that I think it needs to be happen. I think still our have transportation issues. Right. It's really lighting. I think our cross country. Our athletic director, our director of maintenance and operations, I think that they would we benefit from them being at that table for that discussion and their input being solicited. I mean, I'd be for lifting the deed personally. I'd be for lifting the deed restriction to have it on the champion property as long as we have an, another option in place. I would prefer not to have it on the champion. Yeah. I, mean, that's, that's just I just feel like it's, yeah. I, I but just, but we, we need more information on this option as well as, as on the school due diligence on the school property. Right. Yeah, we just need something concrete. So hopefully the attorneys can talk. I'll, I'll give them and, feedback. Yeah, you kind of know where we're at. And I'll try to talk to um, both PDA. Um, is there someone at the village who could mock up something? on what it looked like over there. And then we'll call Mark about something yeah. what an impact there. Yeah, think we're, there. they're thinking. I also don't want to just say let's let the attorneys talk because the whole purpose for us to try to get together was for all of us to talk right. and work together collaboratively. Um, I understand that the attorneys have to have their legal opinions, which we need and want to protect all parties involved. But I think it's important for us as community members and Board of Education and the Village Council and the people in the community that we talk about it with yeah. the people too. We want it to be collaborative. Back and forth. Yeah. It needs to come to us. That's why we didn't, that's why we had not seen this. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything else? Okay. Anyone have anything else on that topic? We're good? 
Okay, um, new business, item A, staff dress code. We have two policies here, item 3216 and 4216. So we have been discussing staff dress code. There's been a few complaints here and there that have gotten to us um, with regard to this. So we just wanna make sure that we're clear on what the expectations are and make sure that we are all on the same page with what those expectations are as far as the staff is concerned and the professional level of attire. Um, I think looking at the policies, be neat and well-groomed, dress in a manner consistent with their assigned responsibilities, dress in a manner that can communicate to students of pride and personal appearance, dress in a manner that does not cause damage to the district property, be groomed in such a way that their hairstyle or dress code does not disrupt the educational process or cause a health or safety hazard. I think it's just the level of professionalism that we're looking at here. Does anyone have anything on this? Just subjective. Yeah. Who determines what causes disruption? Right. How do you determine that? Who and how, I guess would be my question. Who determines that now? Who decides if professional appearance and dress is disruptive? The leadership. Right. right. I think, like, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, like there are teachers and their staff that needs to do their job. So I'm not by any means thinking that someone needs to be in formal dress attire at work every day because we know our ed associates need to get on the floor with the kids, our elementary teachers to get on the floor with the kids, and we want them to be engaged well, with the students. Are there other, other recommendations for a different policy for it to have more language in it? I mean, I can, I can certainly look to see if we can create more clarity as far as and and as far as what professional appearance is based on that uh, based like on t-shirts with writing on them for example i don't even know i'm just trying to think yeah, of something right. like a shirt with writing on it that's not affiliated with like if you're having college day and you wear your college sweatshirt that's understandable right but something right. out of out of line or out of view sure off. So so, they, you know with these things it's it's context right right you know, you can take our kids to the Museum of Art, and they're going to see nudity. Mm -hmm. It's art, well, but obviously if it's nudity in the hallway, we got issues. <laughs> yeah, not in the school. Right? I mean, it's context. <laughs> and so, you know, it's one of those things that's tough to measure. Mm -hmm. I think as a general statement, you know it when you see it. Uh, and in this day and age, you have to approach it with discretion, and you, and you have to be consistent in your practice. Right. Uh, it, it's, it's an ongoing uh, ongoing work to, to try to maintain that. But. Yeah, we just certainly don't want to hold our students to higher standards than we hold our teachers to like with regard to the dress code, things like that, correct? Like, and, and fashion is a, is a moving right. target as well. I think I think we can all sit here and say that what's acceptable today was not acceptable a few years ago. True. Probably so. I mean, it just, yeah, it's the, 2006 it's just changed a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So if we need to um, revise the policy, is the policy enforceable? Is there anything we need to do from an HR standpoint? I think you need to look at uh, if you want to put rest be restrictive and say, if you go to some restaurants, they'll say no cutoffs, no this, no that. If you want to, you want to be specific, you can do that. I you could say there's a there's a um, Business casual is a kind of a term, but it comes with the standard behind it. Right. Uh, it's it's how restrictive or how unrestrictive or how you know professional is that? That's a, that's a very it's a word, but, but you know, but, yeah. But, yeah. And so, uh, do you want to be specific? Do you want to be general? And, and and oftentimes policies are more general. Yeah. Um, and so you, you kind of have to decide: is do you want to be restrictive with Description, or do you want to be more? Again, I you know, kind of as a board determine what you're looking for. I think it's easier like, to say what you can't wear. Right. Just like Jack said, it's you know you know when you see it. Right. But so it's like business casual, not club casual. 
right? I, 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 I mean, there should be some, some definition to what you're expecting. I yeah. I mean, it just, I mean, that's, I mean, for both men and women, right? Business, professional, business, casual, wherever that may fall, depending on what you do, you know, for the district, not West 6th Street. Yeah, I mean, so, look, if, you, if you're going to a black tie event, you're not wearing a t-shirt and just a black right. tie. Yeah. You're wearing exactly. something that's expected by that. We, we can provide to the board some, um, if we see other district dress codes and what they might have, we could, um, we could just kind of see what's out there mm -hmm. and then to see if the board wants to change policy to 2006 to 2024. Mm -hmm. um, the styles have changed and they continue to change. Sure. I mean, we're reasonable people, and when concerns are brought to us, we are tasked with addressing them. So. Yes, undressing. No, not undressing. Addressing. It's been a really long day. <laughs> okay. Um, is there anything else with that that anyone has? It? I think we just. Are good. Is there a motion to adjourn? Oh, do you have more? Well, there was a donation. Oh, did I miss it? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was just interested to see if you guys wanted to do what you've done typically because uh, we're coming up on that time. We can Venmo you. Yes. Okay. I'll yeah. send out an email. Thank you. Perfect. Lost my spot there. Sorry. Um, correspondence and announcements. There's been no communications to the board, upcoming events and meetings. The next regular Board of Education meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, November 19th, 2024, at 545 p.m. in the Tarbuck Center Conference Room. If anything is needed before then, it'll be noticed accordingly. Um, public participation. Oh, I thought that was the person talking. Okay. <laughs> Is there a motion to adjourn? Second. Roll call, please. Mrs. Foley? Yes. Mr. Leidig? Yes. Mr. Roberts? Yes. Mrs. Kepker? Yes. Mrs. Fiola? Yes. Thank you. Yes. 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 Y